Let's give the Lord a praise. He's worthy. He is so worthy to be praised. Let us pray. Lord God, we come before you this morning to say thank you again. Thank you for keeping us, oh God. Lord, you keep us from one week to the other. Lord, we praise you, God. Yes, God, make provisions for us, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And Lord, we thank you for our house of worship this morning. That we can come in and give you glory. And no matter what's going on, Lord, we thank you, oh God. The life is well with us as it is. We thank you. We thank you for each person that's here this morning. Thank you for the families that are here, God. Give us peace in our homes, oh God. Give us peace with our neighbor, oh God. God, we say thank you. Thank you. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for this hour of worship. Thank you. As we come, oh God, let's give it all to you this morning. Lord, we thank you. Bless our pastor. Bless the first lady. Bless bless the own way, Lord. Bless Thomas, Lord. Keep us in your care, Lord. In Jesus' name. And all of us say, Amen. amen. Let's give the Lord a praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. I praise you.
Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
have a um, refresh. I will call you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to thank them. But we will have a refresh now. Amen. Amen.
we pray. And to every demon. conversation that's going on in the text but I promise you I'll bring you up to speed this is what it says it says Thomas said to him Lord we don't know where you're going so how can we know the way Jesus actually says I am the way truth and the life no one no one comes to the father but except through that's right me that's right. with your permission i'd like to read that again say it again thomas said to him lord yes. we don't know where you're going so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The time is mine. I want to preach the topic. What to do when you don't know? What to do when you don't know? Help us, Lord. Help us. No. Brothers and sisters, as we take time to find out what's going on in this text, this is literally a continuing conversation Jesus is having with his disciples in the upper room. This is pre-Easter, so excuse me for the date on the calendar. That's all right. But this is what God led me to talk to you all today. He is having a conversation with his disciples. As a matter of fact, if you allow me to indulge in what's going on, Jesus began by washing his disciples' feet. Letting them know that this thing called ministry is a ministry of service. Yeah. That we've got to learn how to serve our community. Mm, that's right. We've got to learn to understand that these walls that we sit in, and even though we paint them, they look so pretty, but these walls are not the focal point of the ministry. Come on now. Jesus, if he can go out and wash feet Come on. in the street, how is it that we cannot go out in the street and talk about how good our God is? Oh, yeah. You do know the streets are known for talking anyway. Yeah. 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 The yeah. streets are known for gossip anyway. Yeah. You're right. Why should we, as the children of God, who have the gospel on the inside of us, allow gossip to run the streets instead of the gospel? And 
So what we have to do is understand that we are in the ministry of service and serving. And that means if we have to serve the Lord to somebody, that means when we talk about serving the Lord and we talk about waiting, we're talking about waiting and serving, those things go simultaneously. And sometimes we think waiting needs to stand still. But no, no, don't you understand the person that comes to your table is a waitress or a waiter. They are waiting on you. They are serving you to find out what do you need me to bring you and how is it that we are children of God and we walking around and we don't want to serve nobody if we serve a God then we'll look out and look slow and we understand how powerful he is why can't we serve somebody that God yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. better say yeah. that yeah, yeah. He, he, he is serving he is serving he is washing the disciples feet yeah not only does he wash his feet their feet but he goes into a conversation with them at the table. He tells them at the table. He even knows what's going on. He tells them, even the person at the table, he even says, I know one of y'all going to betray me. Won't y'all hear this? Mm, yeah. I know one of y'all going to do it, but notice what it did not do. It did not hinder the service that Jesus was going to do. When you allow other folks to hinder the service that you got God, oh my God. Yesterday, we were in a meeting yesterday, and, and Steve Harvey said to us, he said, Try to do something else. I want y'all to get this. He says, even though I've got money to do what I want, he says, I wish I could do what I wanted to do with my money, but God has called me to do something else. He said, God called me to do something else. And he shared his vision with certain folks. Let me help y'all. He said that God gave him the vision. He told folks that didn't have the vision. He said, What I want to do for you, and they said, We don't need it. Ooh, my Lord. Yeah. Jesus. Help, Lord. Mm. Help. Let me help somebody. When God has put something in your heart, has given you something to do, you cannot allow folks to hinder you because what the enemy understands is, and why the enemy tries to stop us and deter us, because if I allow you, if I don't stop you, if I don't trip you, if I don't mess you up, you're going to figure out how much power you really got. So every time you try to go forward, that's why the devil tries to push you back, and you can't let your ministry stop, that you got to make up in your mind. He's washing their feet, even though Judas was there. His ministry did not stop. Y'all say, did not stop? Yeah. Not only that, he's here and he's telling them also, and Peter, who is his boy, his right hand, he tells Peter, even Peter, who has not done anything up until this time, has not done anything. He says, Peter, you're going to deny me. He said, not me. I ain't going to do it. He said, you will deny me not only one time, but three times. But what I like about Jesus is he still said, you still going to be my. I love that. You got to understand, if you got friends, you're going to fall out every now and then. Matter of fact, if you got a friend you ain't fell out with, I question your friendship. Because your real friend going to check you when you need to be checked. They're going to get you. The problem is what we got right now. We got groupers and we ain't got friends. Groupers ain't going to do nothing to push you on. But friends going to stop you in your tracks and tell you, you need to do stop that. You need to take that. And you don't need to be patting them on the back every time and going with them. And you might say, well, I ain't do that, but you drove them. You need to have, you drive the car, turn the car around and say, we ain't going to do that. Sometimes it's like, you got to have a vote that's going to check you. Come on, Pastor. Have the conversation. That's 13. Y'all say 13. 13. Yes, sir. me. That's right. What he does is then Jesus does and he served them. He tells Judas, you're going to betray me, but he did not allow his ministry or his word to stop. He tells Peter, he's going to deny it, but the ministry does not stop. And we've got to understand, we cannot allow a human or humanity to stop what God has a divine plan for you. Yes. Yes. Notice this, now, four, y'all say 14. 14. There is some anxiety in the room. Most of you all know what anxiety is. There are people who serve uh, anxiety, suffers, people suffer from panic attacks, and it almost feels like a heart attack where your, your breathing becomes shallow and, and you don't really know what's going on, and you, you, you're searching for cause and things are uncertain in your life. And sometimes in life, a lot of us have gotten to this point in our life where we're here, and, and we get to the point where we say, I don't know. And, and Jesus says to them, He says to them, let not your heart be troubled. Mm. But Jesus tells them, chill out. Yeah. Calm down. But I like Thomas. I like Thomas. People talk about Thomas. When you say Thomas, everybody 
Thomas said down Thomas. They don't realize I call him direct Thomas because Thomas was not going to allow anything to be on his heart that he did not say. Yes. Yeah. Thomas says, he says, let not your heart be troubled, believe in me. Uh, and he says, I'm going to build you, going to build a place, a mansion, a house, a home, a dwelling, a, a room with many rooms and mansions. I'm going to build a place where I am. Ye shall be also. Yeah. I'm going. Yeah. And, and then all these things. He tells them all these beautiful things. Paint this beautiful picture. And Thomas said the same thing that I'm about to preach about right now. I got y'all to this point. Hope y'all follow me on. He says, I'm going to a place. And Thomas says, we don't know where you're going. <laughs> All right. Thomas says, I don't know. See, a lot of times people don't want you to ask questions. The people don't put in your mind, your grandma was in your mind a long time ago. Don't you dare question God. Don't you question God. Don't you question God. Let me ask you a question. How can you have a relationship with somebody if you can't question God? Ask God, what's going on?
know. I'm glad that Thomas interrupts this beautiful picture that Jesus paints of what heaven's going to be because he says, thank you for telling me what heaven's going to look like. But I don't even know what today looks like. I don't. I don't know. I like it because even when you look at the text, it says, I like it because they let you know that Thomas said it, but he says, Lord, come. Pause. Yes. Yes. Right there. And what he did was, what, Tom, what I like about Thomas is because he understood that there was a back room conversation going on and everybody felt the same way. And Thomas had enough gall to say, he didn't say, I don't know, but he said, we, oh. mm. we, 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 we don't know how much longer I got to struggle. We, we don't know how much longer I got to keep taking this medicine. We don't know how. how how much longer I'm going to keep feeling like this we don't know but we, we just don't. how long is my back going to be up against the wall Jesus how much how many more drinks same folks going to have every evening when they get off because the day too long the first thing you think about is when I get home I'm going to get me the biggest ball I got in the house. Jesus. Next thing you know, a glass of wine will turn to a bottle of wine. Come on, come on, come on. A elbow will turn into a joint. A joint will turn into a blood. I ain't gonna even go smokeless, which is this. The vape that went from a went from a blood to a vape. You know what? All these different places. Just to say to yourself, I just I don't know where it's gonna happen. I just need something to help me get through my moment of pain and issues. That's it. That's it. What do you do when you don't know? We don't know. Thank you, Thomas. Because <laughs> Thomas gives him two questions. And he said, Lord. We don't know where you're going because I ain't understood most of the stuff you said. I saw what you did. I saw you open blinded eyes. I saw you raise the dead. But when you talk about kingdom, I don't understand where you're going. And guess what he says? Not only do I know where you're going, but we don't even know how to get there. Wow. Everybody talking about heaven and don't even know. Come on. I get them. Come to church Sunday in and Sunday out. Sing songs, shout, take the church up, mess up our hat dudes. We are doing all this stuff. They said we had good church today, but you don't know how you get to heaven. Jesus. That's what he says. Notice this question that shouldn't have dispelled grandmama them, great grandmama them theology right here because it says in verse 6, Jesus answered. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. First thing you do Hallelujah. is when you don't know, is when Jesus gives us the answers to this test. Mm. First answer he gives us, he says, I am. Yes. <laughs> Number one, when you don't know, first of all, you gotta make a decision. Yes. The decision has to be, what is the decision? The decision means that even though you're in a point of uncertainty, you've got to make a decision. You've got to choose whether I stay in this state or do I move to my left or my right. Not knowing if my left or right is stable, but I've got to make a decision. Jesus literally tells you the answer to the question. He says, I am. Which means that if you want to know some things in your life, first of all, Jesus says, come to me. I like that. Because Jesus says you don't have to go anywhere. I've got all the answers that you need. Whatever you need, Jesus says, I can help you. And we've got to make a decision in our lives. Instead of trusting people all the time, we've got to learn how to trust in God. If the dollar bill on the back that says it, don't believe it. But even though if a dollar bill says it, and we got so many dollars in our pocket, it says in God we trust. It bothers me that we are still, the money we spend say it trust in God. But the person who spends it don't trust in God. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Because if we trust in him, I want y'all to get this, what he's saying is you got to make a decision if you want to be in a relationship with me or the world. Jesus. You got to make a decision because what the Lord is saying is, I like this, I like this. A lot of people tell you a whole lot of things that the 
Lord don't like it. And he goes list. And people say, no, we know he don't like lies. We know he don't like uh, uh, all those things. And we look at the Ten Commandments. And God will forgive you for those things. But there's one thing God says he don't like. Yes. There's one thing that God says that there's an action behind it. Go and ask me what? what? I'm glad y'all asked that question. What Jesus says and what the Bible says is God says this. Either you be cold. He says, make a decision. Right. Whether you're going to be cold or hot now, people say, well, cold means yes, and hot means no. No, 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 no. He was not saying it like that because you can drink a cold Coca-Cola and with some ice, that's real good. And you can drink some hot coffee and that's good to you as well. But what you don't like about either one of them is they're lukewarm. They're right. They're right. teaching now. It's at a temperature to the point that makes you gay. Instead of you digesting, you spit out your mouth. The only thing that God says I respond to or there's an action behind it is when you don't make a decision. God says I don't like fickleness. That's right. That's right. I don't like you to be lukewarm. Don't tell me you love me today and you talking me out tomorrow. He says I don't like fickleness. That's why Jesus says he lets Thomas know that if you don't know, he says first thing you got to do is you got to make a decision that you want to know. Yeah. Number one, he says, I am. I like that. Guess what? Number one, he gives make straight make a decision. But number two, number two, he says a direction in the text. He says, I am what? The way. Most people don't understand. Before people of God were called Christians, before the people of, 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 of those days when Jesus was around, they, they did not call them Christians. They called them the way. Yes. They were known as the way because they were trying to walk in the way of the Lord. And so number one, number one, he gives you chance to make a decision. But number two, he gives you direction. When you don't know, you don't have direction. But God, Jesus is trying to let you know, I'm giving you some directions that if you make the decision, I'm not going to just leave you at the decision part, but I'm going to give you directions and tell you to come, oh my God, to come this way. There are some times in life we don't know which way we are going, and there are times in life where there are roads out or bridges out in life, and sometimes and when you're traveling down a road, they'll tell you you got the detour right here because the normal path that you're taking is no longer functioning, but they give you a sign or tell you you got to turn right here. What God Y'all say it with me. Decision. Decision. Direction. Direction. Louis says, I'm the way, the truth. And yes. he says, I am the way and the truth. Number one, decision. Number two, direction. Number three is deposit. Right. Truth. Uh, truth is, the root word of truth is trust. The root word of truth is trust in truth. That means that when you deposit your finances in a bank, you only deposit your money in a bank that's FDIC insured. Yes. Yes. Come on now. Yes. Come on now. Yes. Do y'all know, do, do know that? Can I get, can I get F, FDIC insured? Can I tell y'all what that is? What that's telling you is that no matter what happens to the bank, because we insurance on your money up to a certain amount that even if we get robbed, the building burns down, even if the economy crashes, you got insurance on the money that you have with us. And so that's why you deposit your money in the bank. You don't put it in your mattress anymore. You don't hide it in the backyard no more because you understand people may go into your mattress. They may dig in your backyard. And so you trust the bank. So that's why you put your deposit in the bank. Matter of fact, you trust the bank so much. Say how much I trust the bank. Go ahead and say how much I trust I'm so glad y'all asked that question. You trust them so much because you've gotten to the point where you get an automatic deposit in your check. You don't even see your check anymore. You understand that you trust your bank so much that you put to relate your job in relationship with your bank and say, I trust my bank so much that whatever you're supposed to give me, I believe that it's going to be deposited in my account. Oh my God. And you trust your bank just that much that you can go to the bank and see all your wages there. You can see whatever you need. You can pay your bills. 
reason why? The question is, why is Jesus so concerned about my destiny? Because what he's saying is, is that if any of you all has ever been to a hotel, a really nice hotel, I mean, not, this is not the Holiday Inn Express that I'm talking about. This is not comfort inns and suites. But if you've ever been to the W Hotel in Atlanta, mm. the one that has the sundown on the roof, yes. uh, it's the restaurant that when you're sitting there, you can sit in and it'll turn yes. you to see yes. all of Atlanta while you are sitting there eating yes. your filet mignon. While you're eating crack crab, you're sitting there and they have string music playing in the background. And you're sitting there and you're comfortable because you understand that everybody can't come up here. Oh my God, you get this. Everybody can't come where you are. See, what they'll tell you is, you can go to the front desk and you can say, yes, we have reservations until the sundown. And they got a sign that says sundown. What they're trying to tell you is, the father, the, the person or the concierge will give you a card because they let you know that the only way you can get to the top is you've got to have some access. You've got to have an access card. I don't care how much money you've got in your pocket. You can get on the elevator. It'll stop you at a certain floor. But in order to go in a higher, you got to slide your card in, your access card. What Jesus is trying to tell you is, you can go in the higher Today. Thank you, God. God is so good. Thank you, God. Let me tell y'all why I know God is good. There are days what people understand is what happens in the background before the church starts. There are so many things go on before the praise team even step out. There are things that go on. Music, no music. Him ain't him. This, that, the other. Come on now. People, present security, highly security because people are walking in the church and shit for. We've had all these meetings before. We even come to deliver the word to you. Jesus. But God wants to find out some sons. Come on now. Can you worship me? Right. In spirit and in truth. But your praise ain't predicated. Jesus. On the keyboard. Your things ain't predicated on some drugs. Can I help you? Okay, I hope y'all get this. I hope y'all get this. This is G14 classified. Y'all lean in, even though y'all stand up. Yeah, we got it. Y'all lean more. We got it. Pain don't need music. Jesus. Woo! 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 Woo!
your praise can show God. You should have to have nobody to pump you. You should have nobody to pump you or pride you. That you ought to say, God is so good to me. And there will never be a better be. God, I got no beat in my heart. I know my God. Somebody tell y'all something. When pain shows, it does not care what time it is. It does not care how dark it is. Remember, I said, pain don't even care if you got company. No, my God. Come on now. Pain just like roaches. It'll come out soon. Everybody show up.
That's why somebody can tell you, I know him as yes, Lord. a healer. Yes, Lord. I never get it the night my mom passed. I was playing this worship music and hoping that was She said, just, she said, just turn it off. Turn it off. She was restless. We just went through a little quiet. But it was a peace to get that room like no no. There's time in life where God is trying to give you that peace of mind that you need. And sometimes God wants it in the stillness of things. The quietness of things. Sometimes we got to shut things off. Amen. To turn some things on. Come on, that's good. Amen. Today I want to give you the power to turn some stuff off. Because there, there's a reason why people come to you telling you this because they understand you've got a gift in you. There's a reason why stuff falls in your lap because the devil understands you got a gift in you. Amen. Come on, come on. But if you can treat it like a dog of war, the word of nature repels off you because you got a greater thing that God has designed for you. Jesus. Because your hands right where you are. Jesus. I gotta be obedient. That's some old folks that want to come. God's giving you that opportunity to come right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I, I, I hear somebody say, "Well, they're gonna pray." I'm just saying, "Yeah, no, no, no." Why don't you? Why don't you make a step toward him right now? Go ahead, go ahead. I, I know I'm not making this up. You need to come. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I can't move until you move. I can't. I can't move until you move. Come on. You know God is God is telling you to go. And you you fight it. But come on, come on, come on. Most gracious God, Jesus. as we come before you right now, yes, Lord. it is in the quietness that we can hear pain. It's in the quietness that we can see tears. It's in the quietness that we can see the anxiety and all the other issues. And sometimes we get blinded by noise and music. But God, even in this quiet time, you are still God. God, the most thing that you want with us, and I understand it now, now more than ever, the picture is so clear, is that God, you were so happy when you walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. Which lets us know there was no church. There was no music. Yes. It was simply a relationship. But each party wanted to see the other one so bad yes. that showing up was enough. Yes. God today, show up for us. God, show up for us. Everyone in this place, wherever you are, I dare you to say, Lord, show up for me. Lord, Lord for me. Lord, I've been stood up before. But show up for me. There are people who told me they'll be there. Then they come. Lord, show up for me. There are people who walk down. Lord, show up for me. This mother thing, this father thing, this parent thing, this yes. marriage thing, this job thing. Yes. So much show up for me. Yes. Yes. God, yes. our requests have been made known. Yes. Show up in my heart. Yes. Show up in my mind. Yes, show up my words. Yes, Lord. Show up. Yes, Lord. That God, you show up for me so much yes, Lord. that others will see you yes, in me. Yes, Lord. 
that God, we change atmospheres when we enter a place. Show with me. Lord, I'm asking you right now, whatever we are, whatever situations we're in, whatever we have to do, whatever we have to visit, whatever we have to go, that even if we don't say a word, show up. Matter of fact, God, don't just show up, but go before me. Go before us, God. Yes, Lord. And God, as you go before us, move everything that's not like you. Yes. It's going to hurt. Jesus. It's going to be painful. Yes. But God, we're, and we're asking you, we're, matter of fact, we're commanding that you move some stuff. Because we can't do it. Amen. If we can do it, God has been gone a long time ago. Yes. So God, we need you to move it right now. Right. Move this addiction. Mm -hmm. Move this desire. Mm -hmm. Move these feelings. Move, move it right now, God. I, I can't do this for myself. Amen. This is going to take your divine Yes. Yes. Do it right now. Right now. I speak yes, yes, that God, our homes yes, yes, will be a place of peace, yes, not a place of pain. Yes, Jesus. That we should in our homes yes, and start saying peace. peace. Now, Lord, these are the things yes, that we ask in your name. Yes, in Jesus' name we do pray. In every heart, in every mind, in every mouth. Yes. Say amen. amen. Come on and give God a hand of praise right now. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, tell the Lord thank you right now. Go ahead and tell him thank you right now. Go ahead and tell him thank you right now. He wants some stuff for you right now. Go ahead and tell him thank you. Thank you in advance. Thank you in advance for what he's moving. God is coming in right now. In the name. Let me tell y'all what the Lord just told you to do. 
Everybody just close your eyes and lift up your hands. Wherever you are. The Bible says in Romans 10 9. Come on. That if you believe in your heart, yes, that's good. That God raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible says you shall be saved. With your hands lifted up. All you gotta do is say, I believe. If you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, that means that you are saved. So, so what I'm doing, what I'm doing, I follow the lead of God to say right now, everybody under the sound of my voice, whether you've been saved 20 years or the last 20 seconds. Come on now. It's you a comfort. But I let me help you with the coverage part. Even though Insurance covers us. That means they'll say we'll cover you, but we still have to do something for the coverage. We have to set a payment in for the coverage to make sure that the coverage continues. That means that even though you just got the insurance policy on your life, you still got to pay by giving God some praise, some time, some time, some stuff in your life. You got to give God some attention in order for your coverage to continue. So I ask you right now that if whatever you're doing, wherever you are, you are now, you have this saved right now. But what you do from this point on is now between you and the Lord. Amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together for the Lord right now. Come on, give God some praise in this place. Come on, give God some praise in this place. Give God some praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Stay on your knee too, ladies and gentlemen. Look at Nobody know what you're going through. Stay right here if you need to. Like we'll, we'll bring your chest so you can sit here. You stay right here as long as you need to. Stand by us. Stand by us. You stay right there. Uh, for our young folks, if you were on honor roll, did call some names out, but we want to make sure everybody's inclusive to your child or anything about it that's for wars. Please stand. Let those kids stand right now. Let those kids stand. Please, kids, stand. Come on. Come on. Don't be back. Don't be back. Now, now, I need everybody to stand up and give them a round of applause. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This ain't about. Just let them know. We got so many of our children doing some other things, but we need to let them know that somebody yeah. is applauding them for their work. Amen. Yeah. So we thank God for them. Yeah. Yeah. We thank God for them. And also we applaud these parents, amen, for making sure they get their work. Amen. Yeah. Thank God for that as well. It's not easy these days and times. Amen. Amen. Yeah. With all hearts and minds are clear, don't forget we are celebrating our graduates on next week. So please come out as we celebrate them on next week. Uh, as well, also too, this hats off days for ladies wear the biggest hats you got. Men wear your brim because you know they in and everything. Wear your fedora, your brim, whatever you got. Bring it on in. Uh, we're going to take some wonderful pictures as well. Uh, so uh, we'll do that and have a wonderful time and cheer our graduates on as well. Uh, if all hearts and minds are clear, we uh, we're going to ask everyone to stand. Ask everyone to stand. Also, too, please have your offering prepared. Offering prepared as well. We do know if you love the Lord, you're going to do what you do. We do know we have several ways of giving. We have several ways of giving. And you also can pay your time offers in the back by way of card swipe. We have envelopes back there as well. Also, too, you, if you are giving online, you can give by, by Vimo. You can give by way of Tidally. You can give by Givenify and also PayPal. If you also want to mail it to us here at Facebook, you can do it at 1552 Thompson, the PO Box, 1552 Thompson, Georgia, 30286. Please send it in as well, or you can drop it in our sewing slot in the door as well. We thank God for all things that God has doing and is doing in all of our lives. We pray that this week shall be a blessed week for you as well. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to be transparent today. Thank you for allowing us to be exposed today to say we don't know. Due to anxiety and things that are going on in our lives, thank you, oh God, for allowing us to make the decision.
give us direction because we understand that there are destiny lies in it. God, we understand right now that you're going to do some things because not only that, we're going to go to that number three and deposit our trust in you. So help us this week, oh God. Help us not just this week, but help us every minute of every day to be more like you. Check us, oh God, that we will be pleasing unto you. No longer will we be people pleasers, but God, we want to be pleasers to you. So now God, this week, I speak long life. I speak that you shall put a hedge of protection around us. Keep us, oh God. Yes. God, we speak not only long life, but God, we speak that everyone in this room shall see their generations to come. We speak that God, every element may have cut by hereditary, hereditary, but God, we speak that it shall be moved right now, God. We speak that you shall give us a peace that surpasses all understanding, God, because God, what we don't know, we want to know, and we want to know you more. So now, God, have your way in all of our lives on this day. Yes. And this is your dear son, Jesus' name, we do pray. Bless the seeds that have been sown in this anointed soil called strong wind. Yes. We speak that they shall produce a harvest that will be exceedingly abundant above everything that we ask over things. We speak that it shall be so much pressed down, shaped together. And God, we speak right now, the blessings that you give us are recession-proof, they're stagnation-proof, they're inflation-proof. God, we speak right now that there are no shortages when you when it come to you because you said in your word you got a cow sitting on thousands of years. So God, that means there is no lack in you. We are in this world but not of this world. So God, whatever impact this world does not impact us because we belong to you. Now have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name we do pray. And every heart said amen. 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 God bless you all so much. We love you all. We have a mean sister doing over carpet and cake. And the whole Stone World Nation, God bless you so much. Have a wonderful and blessed day. God bless you. Excuse me, if someone lost a diamond ring, if somebody lost a diamond ring, a diamond ring, please come see us and uh, let us know the, how it looks and things of that nature and we will get it back to you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs>